hello. How is everybody doing this evening? Hopefully, wherever you are, it is not too cold or not too hot. So, all right. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to have you guys here, as I am every single week when you guys come. All right. Are you guys ready? Are your fingers ready to type? Because I've got something. We've got a juicy story, a uh, juicy uh, live today, juicy topic, irresistible offers. We're going to dive right in. So I hope you guys have your pen and your paper because you may need to do a replay on this. So are you guys ready? Do you have a moneymaker offer, right? Do you have a package ready to go? Do you have something ready to sell right now? I'm going to start with what everyone should have is a moneymaker. Do you have a moneymaker offer right now to sell to a client today in your travel business? So if you have a warm-up offer, right? If you have a Facebook group, you have a low-cost offer. Maybe you do a discount on services for your first-time customers. Maybe you have a coupon. Maybe you have an incentive marketing uh, voucher that, that you get. Number two, if you have a warm-up offer, something for your warm audience that you can offer or sell or give away or something. Do you have that? A warm-up offer. I call that also an acquaintance offer. Do you have an acquaintance? Somebody gives you a referral. Do you have a reason for them to be super excited because they were referred to you. Now, I just released my stranger offer guide. Do you have a stranger offer? Some of you new to me may be like, well, what the hell is a stranger offer? So, you know, those boring people may call it an opt-in offer, a freebie, you know, something that you give away for free when you meet somebody, a cup of coffee, right? It's your way of introducing yourself to a stranger. Do you have a stranger offer? Number three. Everybody's sort of ready for their warm market, but you're not ready for strangers. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about that today. So before we get into it, let me introduce myself. Let me thank for those who are new to me. Lots of new people on the line today who have joined me live. Lots of people who are working on it. Super excited to see that you are working on your three offers, but we're going to dive into it deep. So for those who are new to me today, thank you for joining me live. I really super appreciate it. I am so glad to have you inside of our Facebook group exclusive to new existing and future travel professionals. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am your host and I come to you every Wednesday evening talking all things launching, marketing, and operating a successful and profitable travel business, right? So if you are old to me, thank you for joining me live. I love the regulars that come on and um, join me every single Wednesday. But for those that you are new, hang on, take some notes, get a pen. You, this will be available in the replay. So I asked the first question, does any, do you have a moneymaker? We have about 30, 40, almost 40 people online today. And I didn't get 40 ones, right? Right. We are in business to make money. You should always have a moneymaker offer available for purchase, right? Something you can sell right there. That is your signature stick, right? The thing that is you the around your niche, right? You should be able to put that thing together or have it, take it out of your bag and talk about it, be about it. That is your thing, whatever that thing is or whatever niche that you are in. We are in business to make money, right? You should be able to make money on demand, right? Are you ready to make money on demand in your travel business? Often, many of you are not. Many of you are not ready to make money. Many of you are going to scramble when somebody says, where should I go? You should be able to say, boom, I specialize in this. And this is, you know, this this is ready for you, right? I'll have to look and see if the dates are available, but you know, this is the thing. And this is why it's so amazing. I'm going to talk about a formula for you in terms of creating an irresistible moneymaker offer, but you should have moneymaker offers, right? I call them moneymakers, right? Because what are they? They make money, right? So you should have something ready and available as a travel professional, something that is your go-to ready to suggest when somebody says, I don't know where to go, right? In your specialty. Right. Number two, maybe not so much acquaintance offer. You don't have that. But number three, if you are in business, you need to have number three, which is a stranger offer. Right. Because we are in business to do what? Attract strangers to our business to relate to them and convert them into paying um, clients. Right. So I did a live about a month ago. And in that live, I said that 
we are in the business of attracting strangers because family and friends are unreliable. And I'm going to keep saying that until it sinks in your head. Friends and family are unreliable. I love my friends. I love my family, but they are unreliable when it comes to building a business, right? When it comes to seeing consistency in your revenue, consistency in your business, they are not reliable, but strangers are reliable every single day of the week if you are attracting the right person to your business, right? So that's what we want to do. Now, the problem is, is that you're not ready to meet strangers. What you are ready to do is run strangers off. You are ready to, there was this movie. I love, love, love movies. That's like my thing. Like if you know me personally, you know that I love movies. Love, love, love movies. I mean, I am a movie connoisseur. So what I do like is I'll always do like some, my biggest movie type is superhero movies. I love superhero movies, but there was this movie that I watched. I don't know. I don't know if it was the early 20s, uh, 2000s, and it was, you know, like how to lose a boyfriend in 30 days, right? And many of you know how to lose a client in five minutes, right? And Or prospective clients, right? Because what you do is you don't understand just basic relationship cycles, even, even when it comes to your business, right? We... Hopefully, you know, I don't know what your relationship status is. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter if it's business or personal relationship have phases. They have stages, right? And when you try and rush a stage, it sometimes is a recipe for disaster. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about, right? When you meet your significant other, you know, you may have rushed into moving in together. You may have fallen in love at first sight. You may, you know. Because a lot of people tell me, no, 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 I knew immediately that that was the one and, you know, stars were aligned and everything worked out and we've been married for 30 years, right? That's great. But what I'm really saying is it doesn't matter how quickly the relationship develops, the relationship still has stages. And that's what I'm saying is, is that for your business, you are quick to want to fall in love and get to like, you know, the babies and the marriage and all of that. And you don't want to do any of the work when it comes to the introduction, right? The getting to know you phase, you know, nobody likes that, but you have to go through it and you got to give people a reason to want to get to like you, get to know you, right? Introduce yourself, right? So I always like to start when I talk about offers with relationship stages of your prospective clients, right? And so let's talk about those. So it's, it's, it's no, it's no different than any other stages. So I like to equate this relationship stages with your clients to what we normally have, regular relationships, right? So when you meet somebody, what are they to you? They're a stranger. You don't know them. They don't know you, right? You're in your best behavior. You're trying to get to know them, right? What do you do, right? When you when you start dating somebody, the first thing you do is, you know, and, and now in 2020, I mean, I'm not dating, I'm married, but when, you know, back, you know, many, many, many moons ago, you, you'd meet somebody and you'd go out on a date, right? You didn't get married right away. I mean, maybe you did, but the idea is that you met them, you went on a date, you went on a couple of dates, you tried to, you tested them out, see if you like them, and then you progress, right? So now people don't even go on dates. They do like coffee dates now, right? They don't even like do like full dinner dates. Like when I was dating, it was like full, like you go on a real date. Well, now people are like, I, I'm not even wasting my time with you to go on a full date. I'm going to like have some coffee with you, right? I'll meet you at Starbucks. And I'll have a, maybe like half a latte. Like, I don't even know that I can commit to a full frappe with you. I'm just going to meet you at Starbucks and I'll see how you are. Right? Right? Does that make sense? Like, that's kind of how things are right now. And so it's the same way with your business. Because people have so many options. Why would they expend all this time and effort for like a full date with you? They don't know you. They don't know your business. Not only that, the internet has made it so easy to find and travel deals packages and all everything else why are they going to go on a full full date with you what what do you have what makes you so sexy that they want to go on a full date with you right you ain't even giving them a cup of coffee yet you don't have a stranger offer you haven't even let them see a sneak of who you are and what you have to offer in terms of your genius and your amazingness and you're just starting with marriage you're starting with your multi-thousand dollar package and what are you doing you're running off a client in less than 30 days, right? So it's probably not 30 days, but less than 30 seconds. They have no idea who you are. They have no idea why they should buy from you 
or even spend more than five minutes with you. Give them the time of day, right? So I talked to so many people on the phone, in Messenger, just all throughout the day. And the number one complaint that people give me is I give out a lot of quotes and nobody buys, right? I'm so sick of giving out quotes and nobody buys. You know what that is? That's people like like trying to get a free meal from you and they don't know yet if they want to sit down, right? So they've asked you out for dinner. You went and paid for the dinner by giving them the quote, right? You paid for dinner. You showed up in your Sunday best, sort of, right? And and they ghosted you, right? So they did, what is that? They, they did it, a catfish you. They catfished you. They asked you for the quote. And they got you all souped up and all ready to go. And then they took that quote and they went and got the, the information themselves, right? So stop giving away all your stuff for free. Stop giving away all your stuff and all like, you know, so my grandmother would say, don't give out your mom. Like, don't give don't give out the cow, right? What is it? Don't give away the milk for free. I'm trying to get all these like old analogies together, right? But that's exactly what you're doing, right? You don't have an introductory offer. For those people who don't have threes, you don't have a way to get to know you. You don't have a prospective buyer. You don't have a way for a prospective buyer to get to know you. You don't have your coffee introduction. You don't have your coffee ready. You don't have your good latte ready to go for them to take a sip of and for them to be like, oh, wow. She really knows what's going on, right? You know what? I want to do this. I want to I want to experience that. Yeah, right? You don't have that, right? You don't have that stranger offer that does that introduction that invites them for a cup of coffee. I don't want a full dinner. I just want you to see a sneak peek of how awesome I am. Here it is in exchange. I want to start the relationship. That's what a stranger offer does. Now, if you missed my post, and you did not get the stranger offer, what you need to do is you need to write stranger offer right now and I will tag you on that post and then we'll get that stranger offer guide to you, right? In that guide, I talk all about how to create a stranger offer, what are the key components of a stranger offer, what do you need to do? But the idea is the first step in a stranger relationship is to get to know you, right? I said all that to say that, right? Is, is that you need to get to know who your prospective buyers are. They need to, need to get to know you. They need to have a reason to buy, right? Reason to believe that your genius is as amazing as it is, and that stranger offer does it. Okay, so stranger offer will get you connected to the guide that I offered. We did that uh, announcement, I think it was yesterday. So I created a guide special for that, talks all about how to do that. All right, so the second stage is, is right? So you went to coffee, right? You, you stayed for coffee. You probably talked a couple of hours, right? And now you want to go on another date. Maybe you now want to go on a dinner, right? So you, you want you want to take it to the next level, right? The next level is acquaintance, right? And so people may come in as acquaintances to you or they may come in as strangers. And acquaintances is just simple, right? Maybe they will refer to you somewhere. Maybe they saw your Facebook ad. Maybe they saw something of you and they are familiar with you, right? They know you kind of. But they don't really, they haven't, maybe, maybe they bought something small. They, you know, they, they looked at your site. They kind of know who you are, right? Again, you're not trying to sell multi-thousand dollar packages to them, right? Again, you're trying to warm the relationship up, right? You're trying to get in, in there, like somewhere, right? You're trying to get there where they can really understand who it is that you are. Maybe a stranger is a, a, an acquaintance of somebody who's decided to do a discovery call with you, right? They've decided to take the next step. They haven't bought yet. So you still have some work to do to build the relationship and make sure that they really understand what your value proposition, right? That you're vital to the process of whatever it is that you are getting ready to offer them, right? In terms of services, products, experience, whatever that is that you do in your travel business, right? Does that make sense? I'm going to pause for a second. Are you guys getting that? Like, if you are, give me some love. Let me make sure that, th that this is connecting, right? So the first phase is stranger. Second phase is acquaintance, right? They know you. Maybe they referred to you. They don't, they haven't bought from you yet. Or maybe they bought something and it was small. You know, they've been on your site. They've probably given you their email address, you know, their phone number, and they're checking you out, right? That's an acquaintance, right? You're still not hard selling to them, right? You're still trying to warm up the relationship, 
Does that make sense? Next phase is my favorite phase, and I think it's everybody's favorite phase. It's the BFF stage, right? Everybody knows what a BFF is. You know, that's the stage where you are like this, right? They bought from you. They're going to buy again. They love everything that you do. You are the bomb.com. Everything <laughs> that you do is gold, and they can't wait till you do your next offer, right? We all want BFF clients, right? Who doesn't want a BFF client? Everybody wants a BFF client, right? That's where you sell your multiple thousand dollar packages. That's where you focus on selling your money makers too, right? Your job as a business owner is to get as many strangers knowing, liking, and trusting you that they become BFF buyers from you. Does that make sense? Like, I can't make that any simpler, right? Your job as a business owner is to get as many strangers getting to know, like, and trust you so that they become BFF buyers. Does that make sense? Like, I just love that because it, it's relatable. Everybody gets it, right? Everybody has relationships. Everybody has BFFs, right? I have BFF clients and all of my clients are BFF. I mean, I, you know, I hope that they're BFFs, but I love them. I love working with them, you know, and, and, and this is one of the things that I want to tell you too. That relationship is not one way, right? Any good relationship is mutual, right? You love working with them. They love working with you. It's mutual, right? So if you've got this sort of imbalanced relationship where you love it and they hate it or, uh, you know, they love it and you hate it, right? It's not going to work, right? Because I've had, you know, I've had clients that loved me, but I didn't really love them. I was burnt out. I was in the right space, right? That was not a recipe for success for me, right? So I want you doing and working with people that you love to work with, right? It's one thing I met with a client and, you know, she's got, you know, she's selling budget deals, but that's not what she wants to do. You know, that's not what she wants to do. So she's miserable selling to them because she's not making enough money, right? That's not a BFF client for you. Maybe for them it is, but it's not a BFF client for you. You want the perfect match, right? Where you're happy, you're getting compensated for what it is that you're doing. You're not disgruntled. You're not unhappy. You enjoy what you do because you're offering it at a great price point for them and for you, right? So what you're expending in effort, you're getting back in return and it's equally balanced, right? So I want you guys to really make sure you understand that. Because many of you are building businesses, maybe not in this space or you or or wherever you're at in your business, you're building businesses and you are a slave to them and you don't like them, right? You don't like the work, you don't like, you know, I hope it is that it's not a travel business, but I've done that before. Built a business, right? And I'll use a salon industry as that I built a salon industry, built an entire business model, marketing, everything, clients, and I hated it. I hated it. Like, I didn't like the work. I didn't like the clients. I didn't like any part of it, right? It was physically demanding. It was unrewarding. It was, there was no part of it I loved, right? What I do now, like, lights my, lights my fire, right? So BFF clients is not a one-way relationship. It's a two-way relationship where you drop stuff, people are like, yep, I'm in. So when you drop the next one, right, that's what you want to do. But you are spending too much time making BFF offers to strangers and wondering why there's a disconnect because it's not a match. They don't know you. So your job is to do what? What did I say? Your job as a business owner is to get as many strangers knowing, liking, and trusting you such that they become your BFF clients, right? Can you guys say that? As many strangers as you can knowing, liking, and trusting you so that they become your BFF buyers. And the first step of that is to have the right offer. So many of you have offers that are mismatched to where you are in the relationship. So what we want to do is we want to change that. We want to create the right offer for the right person at the right time. So what do I mean by that? So the right offer for a stranger is what? A stranger offer, right? Something that's not heavy, something that's not going to be a lot of time commitment and a lot of money commitment, right? They're two most precious assets, money and time. Something that's not going to consume a lot of time and a lot of money, right? So we're not asking them to consume a thousand page ebook. We're not asking them to look at, you know, a, you know, a training video that's 10 hours long. That's not what we're doing. We're asking them, we're giving them something that's going to 
ease the pain and solve the struggle of whatever it is. So, you know, I've got one of, one of our students, she just created this amazing guide, beautifully done. Uh, branding is amazing on point. The guide is perfect. She specializes in all-inclusive families and her guide is five, uh, five all-inclusive resorts where kids eat free. Beautifully done, right? So what are families probably concerned about? The cost of traveling with their children, right? So to have a guide that addresses that problem is that one problem that's solved by this guide, right? So it's easy to consume. It really does show her brand. It shows that she's done some research. She understands what the client's needs are. She understands these resorts and why they're good. I mean, the guide is amazing. It's really a great guide. Well done. Um, and, you know, all of my clients are creating those type of stranger offers, right? Those kind of stranger offers that are the right type of offer based on where their strangers are in the relationship at the beginning, right? And so, again, it's got to be mutual. I give you something, you give me something. What do I want as a business owner when it's a stranger? What do you think it is that I want for, for strangers? I don't want their money. I don't want their money. What do I want from strangers? What do you think that is? All right. Do you guys know what you need from strangers? Maybe you don't know what you need from strangers because you're probably thinking, I need money. I need money. You don't need trust. What you just need is contact information. You just need for that stranger offer. I don't need their trust yet. I got to build that. That's not going to be given to me easily. I just need their contact information. So I've got to create an offer that is going to allow them to give me their contact information so that I can start the relationship and start to build that trust, start to build that respect, right? Start to build that support. All I want is something as simple as an email address or a phone number, right? A way to communicate. That's all you want from strangers. You don't want their money. You don't want a lot of their time. You just want their contact information. That's an even exchange, right? I'm going to give you a great piece of uh, content, whatever that is, a guide, a checklist, you know, whatever that thing that may be. And all that I want is permission to start the conversation. Does that make sense? Right? So that, that offer needs to be sexy enough for them to give me, give you them digits, <laughs> right? I'm trying to be all, all smooth about it. Right. But I need to be sexy enough. I need to have an offer sexy enough for them to give me the right digits in communication, either right email and the right phone number so that I can start the conversation. Now, once I get the, 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 get the digits, right, I'm going to use them and I'm going to start the conversation and I'm going to be in conversation, right? That's right. So contact information is an even exchange. That's what we want from our strangers. You're asking too much from strangers. If you are just throwing up packages, your money makers on your strangers, it's too much. It's too heavy, right? We need to be lighter with strangers. We need to be lighter. We don't need to be so heavy. We don't need to be giving them so much stress, right? People already got stress, right? You got to be able to stop the scroll in your ads. You got to be able to stop the stranger in their tracks. As a, as a family person someplace, when my kids were little, I'm looking for free food. I'm looking for free, good food. That stranger offer that my client has is a great attraction to get strangers to her who are families, right? Because that's what they're concerned about. They're concerned about making the best out of the dollars that they have with their family members, right? Or whatever struggles that your, your ideal client has, that's what your offer is, right? So that's the right type of offer for the right customer, right? So again, you got to match your offers to the, where your customer is on, um, in the cycle, in the relationship stage, right? So another offer. So now I've got an acquaintance, somebody who was referred to me by someone else. What do you think I want from them too? What do you think I want to do with an acquaintance? Right. For an acquaintance, what I want to do is I want to validate the choice that the referral got. Right. I want to validate that I am a good choice and a match based on the referral referral. E. Right. So the person who referred me said something about me that made that person reach out to me. Right. I'm in the uh, point of trying to validate that and make sure that that relationship is validated, right? Because I don't have to do as much with acquaintances because they already are familiar with me, right? So I'm trying to validate and deepen the relationship, right? Again, I'm not after money, right? I'm not after money. I'm not after heaviness. I'm not after significant amounts of time. 
I'm after relationship validation in the acquaintance phase, right? I want them to get warm about who I am as a service provider. Same thing with you, right? Facebook groups are a great avenue to do that, right? Because you can build that relationship. They can see, they can hear you, right? You can pour into them. You can give them value and they can be like, oh, I am in the right space, right? Facebook groups are a great acquaintance offer, right? Does that make sense? Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Like, get, let me know. Let me know in the comments that this is making sense to you guys and you guys are getting it, right? So the idea is the right type of offer for the right person in the stage that they're in. So an acquaintance offer, right? Something not heavy, you know, maybe, you know, showing up to a live is a little heavy, right? Because you don't know, you got 45 minutes. Is that really, do I really want to spend my Wednesday night 45 minutes, right? But you know, I mean, I've given you enough reason to show up, giving you enough you know, reason, enough uh, ticklers to say, you know, come on, I'm going to give you some good value, show up, right? That's what an acquaintance offer does, right? Some of you all don't have acquaintance offers. So you get people who are referred to you and you boom, you're jumping right in. You're not giving them any reason to really be warmed up in their relationship. You're not validating the fact that they've made the right decision with choosing you and going with that referral, right? That's what you want to do in the acquaintance phase, right? You want to match that kind of offer with where they are. Okay, now your money maker. But what I would venture to say is, you know, inside of our inner circle, we're reading a uh, key person of influence. And uh, we just had book club yesterday. And uh, um, in the section one, uh, Daniel Priestley's whole, he's the author of that book. I tell you guys all the time that that's one of the books that sort of changed my whole outlook on my business, changed, changed the trajectory of where we were going. Read that book in 2016. And we're and I'm rereading it again with the with the group inside of Inner Circle. And inside of section one, what he says is, are you vital or are you functional? Right. And many of you guys are developing packages out of functionality, right? You are feature driven. There's really nothing, there's no, there's no difference between the packages that you create and the package that I can get online. You don't make yourself stand out above the rest. You're not putting in that extra, mm, some of you are, I'm not saying all of you are, but you're throwing together packages that are no different than the, the packages that Expedia.com have. I always pick on Expedia, right? You know, I could say Priceline.com. I could say it doesn't matter.com, right? The point is, is you're not standing out from the rest. You're not really putting together irresistible offers. You got this moneymaker deal and you think it's the bomb.com, but it looks just like the bomb.com deal that's on Expedia.com or Google.com for that matter. Google has an amazing search engine. All I have to do is say where I want to go and Google will spit out all of these prices and, and itineraries and all of this stuff. And I'm saying you're doing just what they're doing. Why is that so irresistible, right? Who wants to create irresistible offers? What's the formula to do that? So I'm running out of time. I'm going to give you that formula. You guys ready? You guys ready? Your moneymaker needs to have four things in it, right? So I'm going to go through these, write them down. Number one, you need to have a core offer. You need to have a core centrality to your offer, right? So is that is that flight? Is that hotel? Is that just a hotel, resort, all-inclusive? What is that core function? of your package what is that core feature of your package right so number one you have you need to have something central right is it the destination is it the resort what is that centrality of your package right or your offer right because your offer can be services what i want you guys to realize too you guys are service providers so your your um offer does not have to just be a pre-packaged right I've got clients who are wedding destination specialists, right? So core, their, their, their moneymaker is a service package, right? It's a service package ready to get you to your wedding destination, all inclusive and includes all the things in this formula, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to get out of your head that your offer has to only be a travel package that's put together. All I'm saying is, is that your offer needs to be, you know, the third type of offer for your BFFs needs to be money making, right? Money generating, whatever that is, right? So it needs to have some centrality to it, some core, you know, set of features, offerings, whatever. It needs to have something central to that. 
Right. So if it's a package and it's a travel trip, it's going to be right. It's either going to be the destination and it's going to be the resort. Maybe it's a hotel and air. Maybe it's a cruise. Maybe it's tickets, whatever that coreness is. Right. So it needs to have some sort of core. And then the second part of the formula is, is that there needs to be some bonuses. Right. There needs to be some extras that they can't get anywhere else but through you. Right. That's where your vitality comes in, is, is that the bonuses that you put together can be not found anywhere but through you, right? So every package that I put together for my clients has some little extra something that they would not have thought for themselves to do or that they can't just go out and do. And it doesn't have to be big, guys. You guys are thinking bonuses are going to cost you, like, I got to dig out of my pocket. I got to spend $50,000. I got to do all this stuff. And that's not what a bonus needs to do. It just needs to be a value to the person receiving it, but you get to set the value, right? The value of what it is is all based on what you assign to it, right? Because people are not going to go and do research and say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to Hawaii and a lay package is, you know, the the running rate for a lay package is $35. And she's saying it costs $75, right? That's not how it works, right? The point is, is you need to have a bonus that's exclusive to you whatever that may be, right? Can you guys write bonus? Does that make sense? Like you need to have as a part of your offer, a bonus, bonuses, right? The more the merrier, right? And again, they don't have to be costs, like cost you a lot of money, right? You just need to have them and they need to be exclusive to you, right? So hopefully that is making sense to you guys as well. The third part of the formula is that your offer needs to have some sort of scarcity, right? It needs to have some sort of time limit. It cannot be open-ended, right? If I can get fill in the blank offer all of the time, every day, every the time, it's not really an offer, right? It's just, it's a commodity. It's not something special. It's a commodity. It's something like, it's like sugar, right? I can always get sugar, right? I can always get flour. I can always get your offer because it's always available. So I don't need to buy now. I can buy tomorrow. I can buy next week. I can buy next year. It doesn't matter because there's no there's no scarcity about it. There's no exclusivity about it. There's no time limit about it, right? So your offer needs to have a timetable, right? That it can't be bought all of the time. It can't be bought every single day. There is a time limit to this. And if you don't act now, you're going to lose out on these bonuses. You're going to lose out on these core items, right? Does that make sense, right? So there needs to be some sort of time limit and scarcity attached to your offers. It's not an open-ended offer that ultimately anyone can buy in because people, they, they need to, they, they need deadlines, right? They need, so if you're like me, you need to, you need a deadline so that you can wait to the very last minute and buy, right? I used to be that type of buyer. I'm now a buy as soon as I find out, right? Because I will get so busy, I will forget. I mean, one of our clients did a pampered chef uh, party and for the life of me, I've tried to buy this 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 freaking pizza flat pan. I went in, I couldn't find it, right? And I get, keep getting these notices and I never got the freaking uh, thing, right? So I, 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 I never got my, my pampered chef uh, pizza pan. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You want there to be some scarcity. So now I got to wait because I don't want to buy from somebody else. I want to buy from her. Right. So now I got to wait till March to get this stupid flat pizza pan because I let it go without doing. That's what your offers need to do, too. Right. I'm bummed about it because I really love paper chef and haven't had a paper chef party in like, I don't know, 10 years or something. And I really wanted the pizza pan and I couldn't find it. I had them send me a link, but I had to go back and they didn't make it easy for me to buy. That would be the fourth thing. Make it easy for your clients to buy. That is the reason why I didn't buy is because it was not easy for me to find and I couldn't buy. So that is like a, an extra thing, right? Make it easy for your clients to buy because what's happened, they'll miss out and they'll be like me talking about the fact that I did not get my Pampered Chef pizza pan, pizza stone, and now I'm going to be without it until March, right? So that's number three. Four, I think we're on. Number four is make it easy to buy. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it um, difficult. Don't make it like, compre- you know, too too complicated, right? They want something, boom, give them a link that goes directly to that thing. And so they can they can sign up, they can get it, right? They can, they can get your calendar, whatever that thing is, make it easy for your clients to buy. Because what happens, confused buyers don't buy. 
like me. Oh, that's a perfect example. I didn't buy because I wanted to buy with her, but the link that I got, it was just crazy, right? So make it easy for your clients to buy. There's too much technology that exists, even in our archaic industry like travel, that you can't make it easy to buy. There's too many systems that we as travel professionals can have that make it easy, to, that make the buying process easier for our clients, right? Okay, and so the very last one, so I gave you the extra one, which is make it easy to buy. The last one is value, right? Y'all all got money makers, right? Is that you have to assign a value to what you put together, right? And it can be actually more than the actual price tag. And so what I'm talking about is the bonuses that you're adding, right? And I want you to think about some of the things that you guys are neglecting to include as bonuses, right? Ease of like customer portals, those are bonuses because not every travel professional has the ability to give their customers portals that they can see their itinerary, they can see their uh, trip information, they can make changes, add, you know, make purchases or additional items through a portal. Those types of things are bonuses, right? And those things have value. You need to assign value to your bonuses. So when you put together the price, right, you're including that value. And then you're telling them not only are you getting all of this, right? It's only for this price, right? And not only that, I'm going to give you a payment plan, right? A payment plan could also be a bonus, right? Lower deposits can be a bonus, right? So it's really about structuring that offer such that it is irresistible. You guys are just slapping together packages and putting them on pieces of paper and maybe you're doing some images and you're calling that an offer and then you're like, why is it, why, why aren't people like excited, right? Because you're not excited. You're not excited. You're not putting together anything irresistible. Now again, I'm not saying that you gotta spend like, you know, 50 hours putting together a quote, but again, your the components of your offer don't have these formula items in it and then you're like, well, you know, I did a quote, I did the research and they didn't buy. Well, why? You know, I mean, if, if somebody in, and some of you will say, okay, well, I charge an agency fee and that's enough. Well, then some of you are still charging agency fees and you still don't have buyers. And the reason again, is probably the way that you structure your offers, right? You're not structuring offers and you're not giving them really sexy reasons to buy from you right? Don't be Expedia.com, the human version. I always say that. Do not be a human Expedia, right? You are vital and you need to show that vitality through the way that you structure your offers. Does that make sense, right? Are you guys getting that whole concept? So I have an offer for you all, right? It's an easy, no brainer offer, right? This is simple. If you are ready to make that move and you are ready to structure your three core offers that you need to have, you need to have a stranger offer, you need to have a, an acquaintance offer, you need to have a moneymaker offer, you're ready to make the jump to do that, let me know in the comments. And what you need to do is just put, I'm in. And what I will do is myself or one of my client specialists will reach out to you and we will talk to you about travel passions to profits to see if it's the right fit for you, right? If you're in, just write, I'm in, casual conversation, and we'll determine if this is a right fit for you, all right? And what I'm talking about is how do you know if you're ready to jump, right? Is you're tired of spinning your wheels. You're tired of trying to get free offers from me or from other people to try and piece all this together. And you're really ready to start working on your travel business so that when the floodgates open, you're not scrambling to put together your stranger offer, right? You actually have support from me when I put out a guide and I tell you exactly what it means to put out your offer, right? I'm looking at your money makers and I'm helping you craft that irresistible offer that when you get ready to promote it, people are like, oh, I want part of that, right? If you're ready to do that, then I want you to type I in. If you're on the fence, you don't know, you're not ready to invest yet, you're still thinking about it, you're still trying to figure out what your host agency offers, you're not ready. And that's okay because it, it's timing is everything, right? Right offer, right time, right client, right? That's what I'm telling you. So if you're in type, I'm in, one of my client specialists will get to you tonight, tomorrow, the next 48 hours, we'll be reaching out to all those people that are in, and we will then talk to you about if the program is the right fit for you. All right, so here's what I am saying. Every Wednesday night, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna talk to you about something relative to marketing, launching, and operating. This is a critical 
item you guys need to have. It doesn't matter if you decide to go with me or not. You decide to invest in my program or do it on your own. You need to have irresistible offers, right? And you need to be able to stand out from your competitors and also from the internet, right? You need to be able to make yourself a key person of influence in your particular niche, right? I help my clients get there. So if you're ready, type I'm in. If you're not, let me know. That's fine. Don't do it if you're not ready because, you know, don't waste my time. I won't waste your time because there's a time for everything. What I will say is, is for those who join me live, thank you for being here. For those who watch it in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay. Super excited that you joined me tonight. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, just say it was helpful. Let me know because I do read all of the comments and make sure that you guys are getting value out of every training every week. But this was all about irresistible offers. The floodgates are opening, right? Even I would say that some of the gates are already open. I've seen so many people on a vacation and, uh, you know, domestically over the last several weeks that I'm really jelly. Um, I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to have you in the community. And uh, it was great to have you here. And with that, I will talk to you soon. Have a great evening. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.